As the Korean War roared, Lieutenant Peter Hoagie Carmichael found himself in the cockpit of a Hawker Sea Fury, a propeller-driven aircraft that seemed almost archaic compared to the thundering jet engines of the Soviet MiG-15s. In a furious skirmish, Carmichael and other Sea Fury and Firefly pilots fought against eight relentless MiG-15s. As the chaos unfolded and the jets took the upper hand, Carmichael's determination prevailed, bringing down one of the jets after expending most of his ammunition without interruption. This unique triumph etched the Hawker Sea Fury in history as one of the rare propeller-driven aircraft to ever vanquish a jet in aerial combat. The Sea Fury was designed and manufactured by Hawker Aircraft Limited during the last days of World War II. Development traced back to 1942, when Hawker chief designer Sidney Cam proposed a lighter version of the reliable Tempest fighter for specification F-243. During the same period, the armed forces issued specification N-743, which called for a naval interceptor. Cam decided both could be merged into one single aircraft design. Cam and his team turned to their successful Typhoon and Tempest fighters to devise a design that mixed the best of both airframes. Development commenced in 1943. The design aimed to develop a fighter bomber with excellent firepower and maneuverability into a smaller, lightweight, and faster aircraft. By the end of 1943, Hawker had five flying prototypes with different power plants, including Rolls-Royce Griffin and Bristol Centaurus engines. Due to the success of these early prototypes, Hawker was to produce some 200 land-based Furies for the Royal Air Force, or RAF, and another 200 naval versions for the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm, or FAA. Nevertheless, the RAF canceled its order during the war's final year, as it already had more than enough Spitfire and Hurricane fighters to fight the Luftwaffe. Nonetheless, the development of the Sea Fury continued with the semi-naval version that featured a short arrestor hook and non-folding wings, having its maiden flight in late February 1945. The aircraft was dubbed Sea Fury, and the first production model entered service with the Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm in early 1947 as its main ground attack aircraft. The Sea Fury had a length of 10 meters, a width of 11 meters, and a height of 4.81 meters. It had a maximum takeoff weight of around 5,700 kilograms. It was powered by a Bristol Centaurus engine, driving a five-bladed propeller that provided over 2,480 horsepower allowing the Sea Fury to reach speeds of up to 740 kilometers per hour, with a rate of climb of around 1,300 meters and an estimated range of 1,220 kilometers. When it came to armament, the Fury paid homage to its name, with four 20mm Hispano Mark V automatic cannons and either 12 3-inch unguided aerial rockets or two drop jettisonable fuel tanks. Like its predecessor, the Tempest, the Sea Fury features semi-elliptical wing and fuselage that, although simple, was further refined and strengthened to resist rough carrier landings. Still, it was smaller, stronger, and faster due to the small improvements made in the overall design, such as the inclusion of radar, a four-channel VHF radio system, altimeter and G2F compass, and other subsystems that would later become essential for jet aircraft. Besides the prototypes that employed different engines and configurations for the Royal Air Force, several variants of the Hawker Sea Fury were produced during its service. These were primarily the F-10 and F-11 in the single-seat fighter-bomber version, developed for the Royal Navy, the Royal Australian Navy, the Royal Canadian Navy, and the Royal Netherlands Navy. In addition, Hawker came up with the Sea Fury T-20, a two-seat training version developed for the Royal Navy. The first unit of the fleet air arm to receive the first batch of Sea Furies in February 1947 was the 778th Naval Air Squadron. The rapid buildup of the Soviet Union's naval forces expedited the testing of the aircraft with the 778's Intensive Flying Development Unit. The 787th Squadron, the Naval Air Fighting Development Squadron, followed later in the year, receiving the second batch of the Hawker Sea Fury. The Royal Canadian Navy was next on the list arming the 803rd Naval Air Squadron with the Sea Fury in late September 1947, completely replacing the Sea Fires. 
Canadian naval aviators gladly welcomed the change after filing constant complaints of the Seafire's narrow undercarriage, poor cockpit view of the deck, and overall incompatibility for carrier use. The Sea Fury continued replacing aircraft in the Royal Navy as 1948 approached. Soon, more squadrons of the fleet air arm were homogenized with Sea Furies, including the FB-11 fighter-bomber variant. The FB-11 would eventually reach the fighter squadrons of the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve in the early 1950s, when the Sea Fury began to be phased out by British jet-powered aircraft, such as the Supermarine Attacker and the Hawker Seahawk. Still, the Sea Fury would continue to be employed among the Royal Navy for years to come, training reserve pilots with the Sea Fury T-20 two-seat trainer versions. In 1948, another Commonwealth country, Australia, constituted the Royal Australian Navy Fleet Air Arm with the aircraft carrier HMAS Sydney. A year later, the first RAN, or Royal Australian Navy, Sea Furies were embarked in Sydney to join the 805th Squadron. The RAN would receive more Sea Fury deliveries in the early 1950s as tensions rose in the Pacific with the spread of communism. This led the RAN to form the 808th Squadron, the second Sea Fury Squadron. While both squadrons were conducting training at the Naval Air Station in Nowra in mid-1951, the RAN was advised that Sydney would be deployed to Korean waters to support the United Nations war effort in the fight against the communist North Koreans. The Sea Fury was finally off to test its combat skills with enemy air forces over the skies of the Korean Peninsula. The Korean War abruptly broke out on June 25, 1950, when North Korea invaded the South, breaking through the 38th parallel and taking over most of the peninsula. Thanks to the rapid response of the United States Armed Forces, especially the Army and Marine Corps, the South stood a chance against a swift and violent occupation. The United Kingdom, as part of the UN, contributed to the cause by assisting South Korea with supplies and manpower, including its naval and air assets. All Commonwealth aircraft were painted with black and white invasion stripes to identify them as Allied aircraft. HMS Theseus, HMS Ocean, HMS Glory, and Royal Australian Navy carrier Sydney were dispatched to the Korean Peninsula to provide air and ground support to the Allied nations. Although the Sea Fury was originally developed as an air superiority fighter, its solid construction and payload capabilities made it well-suited for ground attack operations. With its four wing-mounted 20mm Hispano-5 cannons and 16 rocket projectiles, British and Australian pilots soon realized they could deal real damage to enemy aircraft and ground emplacements, such as machine gun nests, supply depots, and barracks. The first Sea Furies to arrive in Korea were British and belonged to the 807th Naval Air Squadron from HMS Theseus. Combat found the Fury pilots as soon as they touched the Korean Peninsula. The crew did not rest for almost the entire month due to the intense operations that were taking place in the air between the UN troops and the North Koreans. The 807th flew over 260 combat sorties in October alone. No casualties were reported, but the Sea Fury sure brought chaos to the enemy lines, obliterating supply lines and reinforcements bound for exhausted garrisons attacked by the Americans, South Koreans, and their allies. By the end of the month, Theseus's catapult was so worn out that Sea Furies had to be launched with assisted takeoff small rockets while it was repaired. Nonetheless, there was no rest for the Valiant Airmen, as they were called upon once again to assist in pushing the enemy back to the 38th parallel where it belonged. The fight to push the North Koreans back to their territory steadily advanced, both in the air and on the ground, but it was no easy feat. The North Koreans, assisted by the Soviet Union and China, were heavily armed. Soon, jet-powered Soviet MiGs began to take to the skies to fight for air supremacy against the United Nations troops. Sea Furies engaged the new enemy aircraft without hesitation. However, they were cautious, earning the Sea Fury one of the few places among piston-engine fighters to destroy a jet-powered aircraft of the Cold War. Such a feat was achieved by Sea Fury pilot Lieutenant Hoagie Carmichael after a furious and intense dogfight with a North Korean Mikoyan Gurievich MiG-15 fighter. 
to disrupt the communist retreats to the north, the Sea Furies were tasked with bombing airfields to nullify enemy air cover, railways to halt the transport of troops and supplies, and anti-aircraft batteries to clear the skies for other UN warplanes. During 332 sorties, no British Sea Fury was shot down. The distinguished service of the aircraft earned it a new role for air patrols. The versatile Sea Fury began intercepting aircraft across the peninsula and spotting targets for UN artillery. The Australian Sea Fury pilots also earned praise for their flying skills. Since their arrival in October 1951, they conducted more than 2,400 sorties from Sydney, getting rid of enemy ground troops and emplacements. Both the 808th and 805th squadrons fought for their flag admirably against the hostile communists. Eight Sea Furies were lost by the time the last sortie was flown in January 1952. Besides Commonwealth forces, the Sea Fury also made its way to the air forces of the Netherlands, Burma, Iraq, and Pakistan. Although the UK officially replaced the aircraft with the introduction of the Hawker Seahawk in 1953, it still saw action during the CIA-sponsored Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Iraq also made use of Hawker Sea Fury aircraft during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Over 30 of them saw combat during the conflict, but were used sparingly due to the lack of ammunition storage. They remained in service until the late 1960s, when they were ultimately replaced by Soviet Sukhoi Su-7s. Although less than 900 Sea Furies were produced, the aircraft left a lasting legacy on the British and its allied forces, holding its own during the early jet age of the Cold War. By all accounts, the Sea Fury was considered a perfect choice, combining the best capabilities of both the Hawker Tempest and Typhoon, earning its place among the many aircraft that served in the Royal Navy. Today, the Sea Fury remains a valuable piece of history, as less than half a dozen are on display around the world in military aviation museums.